Hey everybody, this is Walter Requiem, and welcome back to my pen ultimate S episode, I would say, of my System Shock 2 Let's Play. So, the last episode, we launched ourselves directly into the body of the many, and now, here we are, staring at the abyss, basically, through a sphincter. So that is, that is lovely. Um, yeah, this part of the game freaks me the fuck out, like, even today. I've played this game for so long, I'm not gonna research those, so don't worry about it. And, um, yeah, props to Looking Glass Studios for making a section of the game that still freaks me out to this day. And that's so alien from the rest of the game. So, let's just get, take a minute to get prepared accordingly to, uh, to what we will have to fight. But really quickly, um, I do have the little bit of crunch skin that we researched, and while we go ahead and see what that had to say about him. You've best learned how to target the Psy Reavers and their projections for maximal damage. All damage you deal to the Psy Reaver and their projections will be increased by 25%. The projections will continuously regenerate themselves until you destroy the brain structure which creates them. Analysis. This is a continuously energized sample of psychocreative residue. It is the end product of a massively complex and focused psionic projection. This residue can be temporarily disrupted, but not permanently destroyed, since a psionic projection can simply be recreated by the source organism. Recommendation. While the projection can be disrupted by most conventional means, this serves only a, as a short-term solution. Resources should not be wasted in combating this phenomenon unless it is absolutely crucial for survival. If it must be destroyed, seek out and destroy the controlling brain structure first. So in essence, what we did with Kerenchkin. Kill the brain first, then kill the reaver. And so, really, is there not much else to do but to go forth? The many hold sway here. Even I cannot maintain contact. You are on your own, human. Fail me not. You know what, Shodan? You can say all you want about me failing, but you should try doing this shit. I mean. This shit is nasty. Do you not see that? Of course you don't see it. But, yeah, you you just need to shut the fuck up. Anyway. Yeah, so part of the reason why this part of the game looks so creepy, and why I love it so much, is it's the 400 texture pack at work here. All of these nightmarish, fleshy textures you see. Oh, hello. We invite you to spread yourself out on our wall. One of our many will be there to help you before long. Ah, uh, and it sounds like we have one of those many. Oh god. I just know I'm gonna blow myself up at some point during this part of the game. Thankfully not against him. And we now see our viral proliferators that will take these things on in three shots. That's quite impressive. Um, in addition to the 400 being, um... Install the other thing I want to talk about is there's not a single quantum bio reconstruction unit on this entire deck. Oh, excuse me. So if we die at all, we're going to have to resume from a previous save. And it seems like already we are coming face to face with our potential demise. So just for the sake of making this section a little bit more bearable, I'm going to go ahead and break my save skimming rule and I'm going to designate certain sections where we can save at. Just so if I do have to reload a save, then I can um, come back to it at some point. Alright, so... Please make your yeah, we picked up an audio log. Let's go ahead and listen to it. One of the flying things dragged me and David here last night. I don't remember much about the trip. I guess I must have blocked it out. Half conscious most of the time. I keep remembering it part from Pinocchio, you know. Where the old man goes looking for the puppet inside the whale. Except I don't think anyone's coming in here to save me. Alright, so... Once again, this is Prefontaine, the man I alluded to earlier. And he is... Probably one of my favorite... Probably one of my favorite characters in this game, and I love his audio logs. Good lord. They just really do a fantastic, masterful job at really illustrating the horrors of the many. As if the game doesn't already do a good job at that itself. So, 
We must be really careful. There's a nasty over there. But we already have the luxury of being able to see his brain from the corner. So at the very least, we should be able to take him out fairly easily. And we killed one of the Psy Reavers. I think it is the Psy Reaver right here. So our viral proliferator has reached the state where it is able to um, destroy both Rumblers and Psy Reavers in three shots while only consuming three ammo. That's quite impressive. Unfortunately, the viral proliferator is a pretty clunky weapon, so um, as much of a positive as that is, um, there are drawbacks to it. And we picked up another audio log from Prefontaine, so let's go ahead and give that a listen. Now I'm convinced that this many, as it calls itself, indeed has a centralized nervous system, which means we would have to have some kind of centralized control. To this end, I've gathered as many weapons as I could and stashed them in caches. One of the beasts discovered a cache and apparently mistook it for food. It simply brought it into the crunching room. Right. So... Looks like there's a nerve cluster, and I wonder if we might be able to burst it somehow. And we did with a really disgusting sound effect. So, yeah, it's kind of, I think it's kind of ironic we're sitting here fighting off the many with their own tools. But, you know, another thing I think is funny is we never actually once see the many utilize the viral proliferator or anything. Part of me has to wonder why they do that. Do they not find their own tools effective? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of funny. We've probably seen more viral proliferators in this part of the, like, in the past couple of episodes of this game than we've seen fucking assault rifles. You can tell that the team that made this game was really proud of their work with that, those weapons. It's just kind of a shame that by today's standards they're kind of, um, obtuse to use. Now, you know, the elephant in the room with um, System Shock 2 is that System Shock 1 is being remade by Night Dive Studios, actually, and Night Dive being the people that were responsible for System Shock 2 being released um, up for purchase again on Steam and uh, Good Old Gaming. Um, basically what I'm saying is, um, Night Dive, if System Shock 1 remastered does well, they'll most likely end up doing System Shock 2 remastered. I'm very interested to see if maybe they'll revisit some of the weapons and maybe make them more usable, or if not, what they'll do precisely for that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a save here, just because that's been kind of obtuse so far, and it's probably best to just go ahead and make a save. And yeah, these fucking invisible arachnids are going to be haunting us for quite some time. Also, this is the entire reason I'm carrying around the hazmat suit. This particular section of the game is evil. I do not like this section. This is, as you can tell from these freaking radiation containers laying around, this is a section of just fucking radiation. Raw radiation. I don't know why, but... The machine mother cannot help you inside the biomass. Her coldness is not welcome within the world. You know what? You can make all the threats you want, but you're not locked in... I'm not locked in this freaking, um... Vor area with you. You are trapped in it with me. I'm coronavirus, biatch. Oh, man. And... Hallelujah, we just picked up thir 36 worm clusters. That is great. Mm. Yeah, and you as you can see... Mm. With no thought of compassion. compassion. Excuse me? Think we will sit idly by? While you corrupt the very room of our existence. Bro, you should tell that to the people you just fucking like, assimilated without their, like, permission, consent, whatever. Y'all just fucking came in here and decided, oh, we're gonna, like, make everybody part of the many. 
and you're now you're now getting mad at me for going around and stopping that. I know you guys don't think you guys are the bad guys. No villain ever does, but I mean, come on, be serious for a second. Yeah. God, just stuff like that freaks me out. Like, you can easily imagine what happened to this woman here, and all these people, they got trapped behind walls like that, and basically, probably, and what probably ended up happening, right, was they got digested, like, straight up by the many. That's quite an unpleasant thought. We've been picking up a lot of these freaking, um, I think they have a warm heart implant, is what I mentioned. Um... Funny, we're picking up a lot of them, even though I've already said I'm not going to be using them. Yeah, um, what I think I might do is after my System Shock 2 series is over, um, I will actually go ahead and make a video just demonstrating everything I didn't really, um, get to demo precisely. But just for now, we have a, a spoopy to deal with. Oh god. Yeah, um... If it's not obvious, this part of the game still gives me the willies. Oh god. Yeah, so it seems like the viral proliferator does roughly the same damage as the uh, crystal shard. Some people might think that makes it worthless, but like, honestly, I don't want to get close enough to a Rumbler. Both because they fucking hurt, right? And because they are actually highly damaging. So I will take, you know, having a crystal shard at range, dude. Alright, and as we continue... The arterial passageways are blocked by some kind of sphincter. I follow the nerves that threaded out of the walls from the blockage. They lead to a pair of nerve clusters. When the passageway is open, the cluster seems to contract. Conversely, I wonder if I was able to destroy both clusters. It would open the blockage permanently. I'm anxious to see the rest of this beast. Alright, so it seems like Prefontaine is just confirming for us what we, um, caught on to was that if we need to progress we have to destroy the nerve clusters. Anyway, yeah, this might be like one of my more quiet episodes, like I said, this part of the game still does get to me. Man, I forgot that the fucking giblets in this game are actually like physical objects. Thank god for the mantle feature or else that would be annoying. So yeah, there's a little bit of sanity in this hellhole hell that is now our world. The chemical storm and there's actually quite a bit of um, stuff we can pick up. So yeah. There's an entire section of the Erkenbacher that we don't ever get to see just because it was devoured by the many and now it's twisted and contorted and just ugh. And you I wonder what I'd be able to find back here. Oh. Meat. What if it turns out, right, that System Shock 2 is secretly just, like, the most elaborate Arby's commercial ever? Like, this is what the entire game has led up to, and now we're just here. I'm expecting the, like, Arby's commercial god just to fucking pop up behind the corner and be like, Arby's, we have the meats. Except, similar to, um, Prefontaine and his notion that this is just basically Pinocchio, I don't imagine there's going to be any Arby's guy for us at the end of the tunnel. I don't think they've even shown what the Arby's guy actually looks like. For some reason, I've just kind of, like, conflated him kind of being, like, the freaking Allstate guy. Like, I get them, like, combined in my head. <laughs> oh god, I thought that was something moving. You seek your associates. But you cannot find them. You are so very alone. I know. How does it feel to be one 
against. It hurts when you do that kind of shit. Ow. And you. I've already mentioned you guys suck. And are those teeth? Yeah, those are teeth. There's another fucking teeth that they're making fucking noises. Oh, and there's a midwife, of course. Mm. Yeah, this part of the game is just honestly beautifully nightmarish. I love it to death as much as I hate it. I mean, he's not wrong. This is really fascinating as much as much as it is like absolutely fucking terrifying. And oh god, oh god, the sound design in this part of the game is just phenomenal. It's so demented and fucking spooky, man. I guess I don't really have words for really how um great this is as a concept for a penultimate level. Like, I have my gripes with it gameplay-wise, but honestly, just as a concept, it's, like, just more proof of this game's, like, brilliance. Ugh. So yeah, we now have to do some first-person platforming without being squished and uh, or chewed up. I mean that's basically both, right? Like we're basically, when we eat stuff, we're basically just squishing food between our teeth. Oh man. Okay. Ooh. Climbing up a freaking vein, yeah. Our uh, nerve, as it's called. Oh man. I love the random orange light here. And we have a nerve cluster which we are able to destroy. You know, some rooms like this of the body of the many are actually kind of pretty, like with the pink lighting and the orange lighting, but just in general, like, it's pretty nightmarish. And it still has the, uh... Ooh, okay. Well, we fell down without having any fall damage. So I want to go ahead and make a save here. Seems like we're pretty worthy of one at this point. Okay, so... Oh, hello. We already have a friend waiting for us. We feel you moving inside of us. The sensation is... Repulsive. God, they close this as fast. Rumblers, man, are just... God. And if that's not enough, we have midwives, too. This is just a meeting of the horrible nasties, ain't it? Rumblers, spiders, and midwives, oh my. Also, a fun fact about those, uh, blowing sphincters is that they will fucking damage you if you walk into them, so fuck that. They don't damage you if you walk into them, they just, just basically rocket you with enough force that you take damage. Oh, wow. That's awesome. You know what, you're getting the EMP rifle for that. And just take a hit already, jeez. So, yeah. This part of the game is very, very... Oh god. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Creepy. It's very creepy crawly.
I'm amazed that a level like this exists in a sci-fi game. I just got killed by a worm, jeez. That seems about right for this playthrough. Also, there's a surprising lack of beakers for this particular fucking part of the game. Can we please get some? <laughs> a lot of midwives, but no beakers. Sounds typical. At least we got, finally, another, um... Analyt healing gland. While I don't understand the analyt life cycle fully, it's clearly extremely diverse. The eggs produce either a male or a female spore. The male, the drones, are wasp-like creatures. The female are worm-like analyts that seek out a host to infect. Following infection, the host begins to transform into a human analyt hybrid. From that point, the life form can take numerous paths. I believe this path is determined by the many itself. The creatures have communicated their need to grow the biomass, so I imagine that biological material is their primary resource. Therefore, each path has costs and benefits. The proto-arachnid is extremely quick and potentially relatively cheap in biomass. The hulking, fleshy ones are powerful, but are clearly a larger investment. I've observed only one example of the floating organisms. The only comfort is that the more dangerous organisms are quite costly to produce, limiting their numbers. Right, so basically... The reason why I think Prefontaine's logs are so fascinating is because he starts breaking down the many lesses and intangible kind of um, phantom threat up where the bomb run, and he breaks down the science behind it. He is a remarkable like scientist and researcher in the face of whatever this is. I mean, honestly, we don't need to carry around the uh, suit anymore, but honestly, I don't know if I would even be able to function in a scenario like this, being trapped in what is basically a giant creature that is converting my co-workers and friends into horrible things that can barely be described as human. And there's a decapitated head right there. Oh no. Oh no, the fucking spiders are aquatic too. And they keep biting me. Ow. Yeah, so... I just like to explore all the nooks and crannies of the many as possible. The time is running out. This place is a room where we grow our, our future. future. Our weapons fail. The <laughs> radiation runs low. And, and you've yet, yet to see our most beautiful creation. All you have is your hatred <laughs> and your individuality. Now don't you wish you joined us? Would you then feel so alone? I mean, I'm not really that, like, running dry. <laughs> I am terrified, though, I'll give you that. Besides the parasitic behavior evidenced in the life cycle of the human analyt hybrids, it's becoming clear to me that Shodan has bred the many to use humans for other purposes. First of all, fish <laughs> clearly has the capability to convert human flesh to energy and can eat us, but it can also directly use us in the creation of its egg pods. Corpses are fed into some kind of tubular structure, and eggs are birthed through a nearby tube. I've been unable to determine whether the organism is directly converting the corpses into egg structures or not, but it's clear that there's some connection between the nutrient pool we provide and the eggs that are being produced. Right, so... So, more or less, the many just straight up, like, eats people and convert basically warps the nutrients that were in their body into being these various things. Like, these are basically made out of people. The spiders are made out of people. That's why they terrify me. The spiders don't terrify me because they're spiders. They terrify me because they were once people. They're just human bodies contorted into basically these hellish fucking dog-sized spiders. Like, I don't know, man. Just... This is a very masterfully uncomfortable part of the game. Like, horror authors take note. Five minutes ago, one of those large, burly creatures dragged plodded towards the 
close to the sound of the grinding. Apparently, the animal uses smaller creatures to help move food along its digestive tract. I tried to help Claudette, but it wasn't even a contest. And I'm ashamed to admit, I judged that seeing what happened to her was a vital element of my studies here. I imagine I won't have the opportunity to record any observations when it comes my turn. Man is very convicted. Uh, has very scientific convictions. I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a save here. You know what? Oh, hello. Yeah. If this looks familiar, it's because I'm about to play a very um, specific audio log. This is the one that I actually have uploaded on my channel. And if you've seen that video, you'll know what is coming. It's clear that this thing I'm trapped inside is intimately linked with all the organisms I observed on board the Von Braun. Strike that. This creature is the same organism. Perhaps the best way to describe it, or perhaps the only way I can comprehend it, is that the organism serves to perform the highest mental functions of the entire species. Only one way down. The smaller creatures exist only to enact its will. Now strike that too. All the specimens act as a whole, like different organs in a single body, with this entity acting primarily as a brain. If one were to destroy this large specimen, I wonder, would it snuff out all the others? <laughs> with only a few short years of evolution, they have been able to conquer this starship, mankind's mightiest creation. Where were we after 40 years of evolution? What swamp were we swimming around in, single-celled and mindless? What if Shodan's creations are superior to us? What will they become in a million years and ten million years? What's clear is that Shodan shouldn't be allowed to play God. She's far too good at it. God, that specific audio log... I mean, so many of these audio logs I've said give me chills, but... I don't know, just... This entire part of the body of the many is just so well done. Anyway, um... Now that we're down here, I'm going to go ahead and make a save, because this next part is kind of a pain in the ass. I will say, we're coming very close to the end of this particular section of the game. And it gives me hairs at the back of my head every single time. It looks like we have company already. Looks like we're in a pretty good spot to avoid getting hit. Man. It's a good thing we have plenty of worm clusters or else this would be not fun. And with that we have the audio log. I, I'm being taken away now. It's my turn. I'm being dragged into some kind of chamber. The ceiling is aligned with a, a number of panels, uh, bristling with what appear to be uh, stalactites or, or teeth. The creature's put me down now. He's leaving. I might have been spared. What's going on? God, that log is brutal and just honestly nightmarish. Like, there's just no other word to really describe it. Actually, no. I say that a lot, but there are plenty of words you could describe that. Horrifying, terrifying. Oh god, mommy, hold me, please. Whatever kind of words you want to describe. It's probably that. And, uh, yeah, th that uh, Psy Reaper is going to continuously respawn, so we need to keep moving. And also, just the way the sound design on that audio log is set up, just... It's wonderful. It's wonderful, but terrifying at the same time.
Oh man. I'm probably being stupid by fighting these guys, but I need safe passage. Here we go. And this is one of the few times I think a pistol is going to become genuinely useful. The end is near. Soon oh god. Oh god, yeah, this is why I saved. The Saivers do so much damage. Okay. It's clear that we really don't have the time just to dilly-dally. We need to get in there and do what we need to do. Okay, here we go. Let's try that again. But do not despair. Surely the Hmm. Yeah, this boss fight's not too hard, it's just so many of the things I don't like about this part of the game, right? And there we did it. The mini is gone. Oh god. Ooh. <laughs> oh. And with that, we die. Beware the machine mother. She is a strange. She is a stranger to everything we cherish. And with that, we have killed the many. And part of them is fucking floating down the tube of us like a disco, so that's quite amusing. Oh god, I hope it doesn't block the fucking loading screen. That would suck. Oh. Looks like we can finally escape the Von Braun. Of course. I know you have struck struts struggle, mm -hmm. but I never had any intention of destroying the Von Braun. What? The Von Braun's faster than light drive can be used to create pockets of pro, 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 pro pockets of proto reality. I am now using it to modify reality. What? To, to my to my own Wait, 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 what? Specifications. The process shall not take long, long, long. If it sounds unpleasant to you, put your mind at uh, ease, in insect. You will not survive to see my new world order. Oh. Well, we just got betrayed. That's fun. Uh, I guess humanity is fucked. I mean, Shodan has control over fucking reality now. Uh, that's a very nice prospect. There's an audio log up here. I wonder... Delacroix? If you are receiving this, I am already dead. When I realized Shodan had betrayed me, I integrated these comments into her primary data loop. Shodan has exploited the warping capability of the Von Braun's faster-than-light device for her own purposes. The device works by altering space around the ship to fairly arbitrary specifications. Shodan has altered it to her specifications. The effect is rather small now, but spreads with alarming speed. Soon it will reach Earth. You are in her world now, her memories, and oh her boy. rules. Watch your back. And this one? You are not alone here. Shodan has spawned her own versions of the Von Braun's horrors. Remember, they are virtual. They are not real. Do not assume anything about their strengths or weaknesses. Oh, great. Well... So... Now we have some nasties that Shodan is able to fucking 
wipe away their weaknesses. That's fun. Well, I guess we've beat the many, and now we just have to see if we can actually defeat Shodan. Alright, so I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, and then when we continue, we will have a final showdown with, sh a showdown with Shodan. And once again, this is Walter Requiem, and perhaps for the final time, you have a good day.